That's about as American as it gets right there. It doesn't get much more American than that. If you think it does, then you must be Korean or something. Today's video is sponsored by Native Sons Goods, makers of the best woven guitar, bag, and camera straps on planet Earth. And now the best is even better with a new line of hand-woven Maya Serape straps with USA Organic Herringbone Hemp backing. Get 10% off when you use the link in the description. And remember, when you support my sponsor, you support this channel, and I sure appreciate it. Hey, y'all. It's shit post Friday. It's not just the content that's lacking, it's also the presentation. I'm referring to him not even bothering to get dressed. Yes, that is the face of Hey. Hey everybody. Today's video is sponsored by Harley Davidson Motorcycles. <laughs> Metallica Circa. 1988, and the letter N for nunchucks. <laughs> it's Shit Post Friday. Thoughts of hate, they fill my soul. This is Eric Buganagan, uh, who apparently is a WWE wrestler. I've never heard of the guy, but I've heard of him certainly now. The child remains of the holy rollers. They scream repentance, though it's far too late. The end of his life. The brainwashed fools fall again of a thousand lives. Yeah! Ah! 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 They feel seemed rather silent, terrified, dreams. Fuck the feel your head. Fuck the me, let it out. <coughs> Uh, Eric is a connoisseur of the metal. He's doing power lifting squats at the same time that he's playing uh, Iron Maiden's The Trooper. Come on, baby. That's about as American as it gets, right there. It doesn't get much more American than that. If you think it does, then you must be Korean or something. Or like one of them Iraqis. You must be something other than American. Probably from, I don't know, some kind of remote island off the coast of Chile. <laughs> yeah, I'm just an average biker who knows his geography. <laughs> I've bucked all up and down the Americas, and this one's the best one. <laughs> but yeah, this dude's Twitter feed, man, is just a, it's just a riot. If you could scroll down, it's just it's one brilliant thing after another. Get it, bro. 
exhale. Speaking of cocaine, <laughs> a couple times in the last few weeks, I've mentioned all the guitars that have been built out of various things like Legos and, you know, matchsticks and whatever. Basically anything that you could slap with epoxy is, you know, you can make a guitar out of it. But this is, uh, I thought was pretty interesting, a guitar made entirely out of cocaine. is intercepted at Cancun Airport by Mexican authorities. They said they intercepted the electric guitar made entirely of cocaine. Uh, the airline passenger passing through Cancun International Airport was flagged for further screening after the individual's red electric guitar was put through an x-ray scanner. The instrument caught the attention of customs personnel due to its abnormal weight. <laughs> was it underweight or was it over? That doesn't make any sense. Is cocaine that? Fucking heavy? A drug dog, dog was called to the scene, which quickly sniffed out the presence of an illicit substance. Apparently, a crafty narcotic smuggler was no match for airport security. It's not clear how much the, how much cocaine was packed into the phony instrument. A photograph shows a diligent police canine pawing at the guitar, and his handler inspects the illicit object. But according to airport security and drug enforcement authorities, a guitar was completely made of drugs, <laughs> presumably cocaine. Was that, when they say completely made of drugs, do they mean like the neck and everything? Like, did they at least put a truss rod in it? I mean, I knew Kramer was still a guitar brand, but damn. <laughs> I guess Billy Corgan was right. The white ones do sound better. You guys might remember, you guys might remember this story that I covered a couple weeks back. Uh, the Springfield, Missouri music store that was robbed. This guy just grabbed the guitar and ran out of the store. It was a Guild guitar. I think it was like an F40. Is that right? Anyway, they, they have tracked down the perpetrator. And what was interesting about this story is that uh, you guys, I'm sure you're aware of the uh, uh, Forever Pick, the uh, pick company that has sponsored a lot of my videos in the past. Well, Rob from Forever Pick contacted me. He was like, man, I know that guy. <laughs> in the, he was like, I was, at, uh, I was at some guitar shows and that guy came in and he was stealing stuff from everybody's booth at the guitar show. He was like, I've seen that guy before. I know... I know who he is. Very interesting. And apparently Rob, he called the, this store and uh, told him about the guy and what he knew about him. And uh, apparently they, they ended up tracking the guy down. And he, I guess, I don't know whether they got the guitar back from him. It doesn't really specify. It just says that they recovered the guitar. I'm not sure how they got it back. But this guy was supposed to bring it back. Apparently, he was contacted by authorities. This is according to Rob, the inside story that I got from him. He was contacted by uh, the authorities, and he was told to bring the guitar back or he was going to be arrested or something something to that effect. And so, apparently, they got the guitar back, and now they're going to raffle this guitar off. And uh, they decided they're going to end the raffle on Valentine's Day. So, somebody is going to fall in love with a new guitar bring it home and to all and all the proceeds are going to go to children's miracle network how cool is that so yeah something uh good can come from something stupid if you guys are interested in entering the raffle to win this guitar i will put a link down in the description all right dudes we have finally entered the 2020s and a couple weeks back i said you know we're about to enter the 20s and in in some of the comments down below in, in that video, people were like, oh, it's not the 20s yet. It's not the 20s until 2021. And I was like, then why is there a fucking two in the tens place? <laughs> and then they're like, oh, you know, the, there was no year zero. So it can't be the 20s until 2021. That's, well, that's not the way that that works, buddy. If you're counting in millennia and you're going back to the time of Christ, then yeah, maybe. If there's no year zero, then you start with uh, Anno Domini, the year of our Lord, number one. I can see where, like, the first century, uh, you know, ends at 101. I, I see where the, the, the second millennium ends at, you know, 2001. But if you're talking about this is the 20s, i.e., this is the decade that starts with the two in the tens place... You're not starting at year one. You're starting at 2020. So, yes, it is the 20s. <laughs> so, just to get that out of the way, this is the 20s. So, Billboard apparently released their top rock songs of the decade. Billboard posted a controversial rock songs of the 
decade list, people got really mad. So, okay, so here's the list. And again, I don't know if, is this legit? Is this legit? Because if this is legit, then, I mean, what the hell? So Imagine Dragons is number one, two, and three for the 2010s. Panic at the Disco is number four. The Lumineers that, hey, I hate that fucking song. The Lu I hate that Lumineers song. Way overplayed. And then 21 Pilots. I've never even heard of them. I've heard of Walk the Moon, but I didn't know that they charted. Uh, Portugal the Man. I know I know of that band, but I've ne I don't think I've heard this song that I'm aware of. I certainly don't recognize the title. I don't know who 21 Pilots is. And they're on here twice? 21 Pilots. Who the fuck are these people? Who are these people, man? And if you scroll down on their Twitter feed here, it's like, you know, everybody's beef is that uh, they aren't really rock acts at all. They're just pop acts with guitars. Still, I, I don't. I just don't even know who the hell they are. Am I that far out of the loop? I guess that's what you get when you listen to nothing but classical music in your car. I mean, who the hell is 21 Pilots? I've got to find out who, who the hell is 21 Pilots. Who is this? Okay, let's listen to this band and see what they're all about. What in the fuck is this? Auto-tuned fucking shit. Come on. 1.3 billion hits, guys. <laughs> 1.3 billion hits. <laughs> no lie. It's actually 1.3 billion billion hits. And I've never heard it before. I've never heard that song before in my life. And that's supposed to be the number six song of the decade. Okay, what Panic at the Disco High Hopes. I've never heard this either. Let's see. I know who Panic at the Disco are, but I don't think I've ever heard this song. Well, these guys got half, half a billion, billion hits only, so. And all this new shit, it like comes in, you know, oh, let's let's do the chorus like right up front so everybody knows what they're getting into. Well, I, I've at least heard that song. <laughs> so, you know, of course I've heard Radioactive by Imagine Dragons. There was a time you couldn't get away from that shit. I don't remember what Thunder or Believer is. I really don't give a shit. Uh, I know who Portugal the Man is, the the band, but come on. No, 21 Pilots is on here three fucking times. Who the f... Who are these people? Alright, so that will do it for the news. Okay, guys, uh, a couple weeks back, I had some viewer mail that I opened up, and I didn't get to all of it, and then I had that video last week where it was kind of a dedicated video, so I'm going to open some viewer mail that uh, came in a couple weeks back, so let's check that out. Oh, yeah, another thing I usually show you guys on uh, on Shitpost Fridays, I show you, you know, stuff that I found at Goodwills recently, and one of the things I found at Goodwills, speaking of t-shirts, was this. I was thumbing through the t-shirts and I found a found a nice Guitar World t-shirt. It looks brand new too, so I was like, hey, I'll have that. I found this DVD. This is Alice Cooper. Uh, this is a live DVD from right around 2000, I think, is when this was filmed, or 1999-ish, somewhere around in there. But yeah, it's got some really good stuff on it. I usually try to pick up, like, you know, because Goodwills, um, the DVDs have just kind of become really inexpensive. You can get DVDs for a couple bucks. And, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff is not, you know, you can't really find it on the internet. And uh, uh, it's, you know, to get it in good quality uh, like this for two bucks is, I mean, to me is a no-brainer. And it's a, you know, it's brand new. Um, you know. So why the hell not? I think the only problem with DVDs at this point is, you know, how much longer will they they keep making DVD players? You know, I mean, I guess that's the question. But um, as long as they're still making DVD players, and I still have a DVD player, I'll still probably buy DVDs whenever I see one that I want. And uh, definitely, you know, something like this, it's pretty timeless. You know, I mean, that that's uh, that's not going to go out of style. It's Alice Cooper, for Christ's sake. 
But anyway, uh, let's see. I've got one more box to show you guys. Let me clear some stuff out of the way. This last package is sent to me by Dale Ingram. Uh, Dale has been good enough to send me several things. He sent me recently a um, an electric mandolin uh, and some other stuff. Um, he just also sent me a um, $25 gift card to McDonald's that for, for my daughter because he enjoyed uh, he enjoyed the uh, video that we did uh, together uh, where we built a built a dulcimer. Uh, he enjoyed it so much in fact he actually ordered a dulcimer uh, like that one. Um, if you guys want one and you're in, you're interested in uh, ordering a dulcimer like the one that I built with my daughter um, I have I think I have enough st materials for like three of those. Um, so I'll build one for Dale and then I'll have enough material for two more if you guys are interested I will uh, I will build. I will build at least the two more. We'll see what kind of interest we have, and hey, maybe we we might make a cottage industry out of it. Who knows? <laughs> we're just making dulcimers, I guess. But it looks like he sent me some some cool stuff here, some magazines and some other things. Uh, he said he was just clearing out some stuff, and he thought I might be interested in some of this. We've got a premier guitar magazine. Those are always nice to have around when you're sitting on the can. Oh, there's a dulcimer right there. Speak of the devil. Look at that. Another premier guitar, another premier guitar. There's another one, Kim Gordon. Cool. James Garner was the man. Yeah, he was in some great films, James Garner. Uh, looks like we, he sent me some uh, some more records. Um, yeah, the first one right off the top, Jimmy Smith and Wes Montgomery. I mean, are you kidding me? It doesn't get much better than that. Uh, Jimmy Smith, master. Master of the Hammond. That guy is the Jimi Hendrix of the Hammond organ. If you guys don't know much about Jimmy Smith, check this dude out. I mean, you're talking about somebody with soul and funk in his veins. Uh, he's got it down to the bone. And Wes Montgomery, I mean, you guys, I'm sure are aware of Wes Montgomery, but I bet that's a, I bet that's a magnificent album right there. I did not have that. So thank you very much for that. John Williams, hell yeah. Uh, John Williams, of course, he was a protege of, uh, of Andres Segovia. Amazing, amazing classical guitarist. Here's a Rick Ocasek. Uh, this was a promotional. Jill Ells Reiner, Chicago Symphony, Brahms Concerto No. 2. Yep, I'm sure I will listen to that. I might put that on just here in a few minutes. There's some Handel. Buck Owens is always good. Some Dave Mason. Wow, that's a hell of a sleeve right there. Look at that. It's a hell of a sleeve, and look at that. Marble vinyl. And this is this is definitely a uh, vintage. You don't see a lot of vintage marble vinyl. You just didn't get that a lot back in the day. Uh, Albert Brumley's America's Memory Valley. So this must be like old reels and old songs, stories and stuff. Old time songs. John Henry, stuff like that. Wabash Cannonball. Lamplight in Time in the Valley. Songs and Ballads. Red River Valley and many other ballads of the romantic past. Yeah, those are cool. There's another route. Another Ralph Stanley. Look at that. Another Ralph Stanley autograph. Can you believe that? Man, Dale, are you just sending me all your just your awesome ass collectibles, man? That's free. That's unbelievable, man. Ra I mean, Ralph Stanley. Anybody who knows country music, uh, bluegrass music, you know that Ralph Stanley is like he is like a god. <laughs> you know, he's Ralph Stanley. It's like one of the pillars of. Uh, of, of bluegrass music certainly and also country music by proxy so that's amazing to have a yeah, I have both Bill Monroe and Ralph Stanley's autographs that you've sent there's a little fab four pick right there what's this Tammy show teenager teenage awards music international sweet is this some old performances TV performances maybe so yeah, I watched this DVD later on, and it's had some really amazing performances on it. It's got Beach Boys, Chuck Berry, James Brown, Marvin Gaye, 
Supremes, Rolling Stones. It's got some uh, really, really cool stuff on it. And the James Brown, my God, uh, the <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. James Brown was just a freaking boss on stage on this show, man. If you guys, uh, if you guys can find it, uh, try to search it out. The Tammy Show, T A M I Show, and watch the James Brown performance on this, man. It is just phenomenal. Dearborn music, what do we have here? Well, that's cool. More pins? Oh, you saw I was starting up, or I had a pin collection. We got little coasters here. What is, are these like 45 theme coasters? Little 45s. That's cool. Yeah, sweet, sweet, man. I appreciate that. And then we've got a, a John 5 bag yeah you said uh dale you sent me a picture of you with john five uh you were you said you knew him before he got famous huh or from from around where you grew up what do we have here yeah he also sent me a um a photograph of him and jason bonham but i did but little did i know he was gonna send me uh some sticks with jason's autograph that's cool it's, wow dude Sharf Elbini, you're you're joking me. Ha <laughs> ha, that's awesome. Hell yeah. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I would have especially loved that when I was uh when I was about fifteen or sixteen years old. I was a Charvel nut back then. Very cool, man. Thank you. Dale, I don't know what to say, man. Thank you so much. I can't believe that you keep sending me all your uh all your signatures and stuff, dude. I'm gonna have to find a place to display these properly. Um you know, as you could tell, I've got, I've just got so much crap everywhere right now. I've got, I do have some blank space over here I need to do something with. I've got a little bit of space up there, but that's kind of like my, uh, you know, my, my daughter's uh, made stuff for me that I put up there. So I have to find some space, man, to put some of this stuff and display it properly. And um, eventually I'm sure I'll get around to that. I'll redo this space and clean it up a little bit too, because I've got, I've just got a bunch of junk too, so. But yeah, thank you guys so much. Thanks to everybody who sends things. All right, guys, that'll do it for Shit Post Friday. I hope you've enjoyed this one. If you have, hit subscribe down below. And for now, we'll see y'all later.